Today we're going to be solving radical equations. So our first example, you see it has two radicals, but on one side of the equal sign is zero. So the best thing for you to do is to add this radical to both sides. So I have 2x plus 10 equals 2 root x. To get rid of a radical, you have to square both sides. So when I square the left side, squaring undoes a square root, so I'm just left with 2x plus 10. Now on the right side, I have 2 root x times by 2 root x, which is really 2 times 2 times root x times root x. By the commutative property of multiplication, because these are all multiplication. So 2 times 2 is 4 root x times root x is x. I subtract 2x from both sides and divide by 2, you get x to be 5. Now because you are squaring with radical equations, you need to make sure there's not an extraneous solution. Or a solution, make sure this 5 works in your equation. So plug 5 back in for x. So I have 2 times 5 plus 10 minus 2 times root 5, you have to plug it back into the original, not one that you've manipulated. Plug it back into the original. So I have the square root of 20 minus 2 root 5. Square root of 20 is 2 root 4, 2 root 5. Minus 2 root 5, that does equal 0, so it works out. Please make sure you check your answer to make sure it works. Okay, the next example. Now we have variables. We just have one radical, and then we have just a variable, uh, just variables and numbers on the other side. So again, we square both sides to get rid of the radical. So on the left, 8x plus 1 because the squared undoes the radical. Now, remember, when you're squaring something, remember this formula. It's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So therefore, first term squared, the product of 2 and x, so that's 2x times 2, so that's 4x plus 4. Now to solve a quadratic, Again, you need to get one side to be 0. So I'm going to subtract the 8x over. I'm going to subtract the 1 over. So I get x squared minus 4x plus 3. Hopefully it factors. x, x. I need the product to be 3, but add to be negative 4. Well, it's minus, so they both need to be minus in the middle term. And then they both need to be... 3 and 1, because the product of negative 3 and negative 1 is positive 3. But when I add negative 3 and negative 1, that's negative 4. So therefore, x is going to be 3 and 1. Now again, make sure that when, after you've squared, that both of these answers work in the original equation. So the square root of 8 times 3 plus 1, does that equal... 3 plus 2, well, that's root 25, that equals 5, so that works. And then we want to try 1, 8 times 1 plus 1, does that equal 1 plus 2? So square root of 9, that equals 3, so that also works. All right, our last example. I square both sides. So the left side, again, is the easy one. So I have just x plus 5. The other side, again, remember this, a plus b squared. That's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So now I actually have a minus in here. 
So the only thing that changes is that a minus b, this is a minus for the middle term. So first thing, 5 squared is 25 minus root x times 5 times 2. And I'll simplify that in a minute. I just want to show you guys that. Root x squared is just x. So I have x plus 5 equals 25 minus 10 root x plus x. The x's on both sides cancel. I'm going to subtract the 25 over. So I get negative 20 equals negative 10 root x. If I divide by a negative 10, I get root x equals 2. Now again, we're going to have to square everything again because I still have a radical in there. So therefore, x is going to be 4. Again, check your answers. Even I'm checking my answer. So I have 4 plus 5. Does that equal 5 minus the square root of 4? Well, I have 5 minus 2. That's 3. Square root of 9. 3 equals 3. So that works. Here are your lesson questions. Please make sure they are submitted on time.